All right, what we got here on the workbench is an Atlas S3. Now this one belongs to my friend Ben, and it is going to the train show on Saturday, and he's going to sell it. But it doesn't work. And so what we have to do is we're going to remotor it. And we are putting in this nice 24-volt FK130. It's got these super long shafts that will cut to length, but it happens to fit perfect. It fits right there. It's going to be perfect for this. Okay, now, when you're remotoring, one of the things you got to do is you got to test the trucks for direction. Because the rule is, we mount the motor with the, with the uh, leads here to the rear. Locomotive's facing front. Whoops, I got, this is a, a rear-facing truck, but we'll use it anyway. Okay, so I got the worm just in here, and I'm going to twist it to the right. Okay, now, on a, on a locomotive like this that has two axles, most of the time, it should move to the right, and it is. Okay, when I twist this, the wheels are going to go to the right. Okay, so I have it set up like this. Now, this thing did not have any wipers in it. Not only that, it was missing a gear. And it's a 17 tooth gear, which naturally we don't have a 17 tooth gear. But fortunately, when we sell this, we've got the instructions here. And the gear in question, I'm going to show you here. The gear that we are missing, see if you can see that. Okay. The gear we're missing happens to be a middle idler right there. And it has a part number. That's the missing gear. Now, the trucks will still work. It'll be just that one axle will not be powered. Yeah, so whoever buys this can possibly get that part. Hopefully. Otherwise, it's going to run pretty good. And, and somebody's going to get a decent locomotive here with a brand new motor in it. And it'll be kind of DCC ready. The other thing is, we've got no wipers. All right, now, for this one, the gear towers are metal. So as you can see, the green stuff there, that is liquid electrical tape. So what I did was I cut some copper strip, some copper sheet, and I soldered on the lead. And then, fortunately for us, our favorite stuff here, goop, happens to be, goop is an insulator. It's not conductive. So let's go ahead and install the final guy here. And I figured out also that these leads need to come up right alongside here in order to come up through this hole. And I did mill the hole out just a little bit just to make sure. And I'll go just like that. And that'll be pretty good. So then I'm going to take a little blade here. Let's clean it off. Sorry, you got a bunch of goop on it. I always keep this big, it's not really all that sharp, but I keep this here so I can clean goop off of, of my blades. And so as you know, when we use the goop, it um, it's non-destructive, it's not conductive, and it allows us to change our mind or do maintenance later. So I'm just gonna put goop on the back of this. Now I've cleaned these and I put OxGuard on the spots where the wiper, where they're gonna wipe the back side of the wheels Get a little more gotta do it okay let's get them in there drop them in take our tweezers here to make sure that the wipers are in place this had wipers in it where they went we don't know and they had these little caps to hold them in place but it was missing a bunch of parts. And that's good. That's pretty good. Okay, if you can see that. We'll let that guy set up. Okay, the wipers are touching the trucks. That guy's in place. Mm -hmm. All right, let's zoom in. So I've got the liquid electrical tape on there, and then I've got some goop on there. I'll do the other side. Now I've got wipers, and they are touching the wheels. Make sure. 
You can take a tweezers and bend this copper really easy just to make sure that it is really touching all the wheels. Mm -hmm. Alright, are we going to touch the wheels on that guy? Hold it. He ain't ready yet. Let's uh, do it like this. There. That would be better. Goop has a very short working time. So you want to kind of hurry up where you just got to put on more. All right, now we're going to touch on wheels. There. Okay. Whoops. Oh, you didn't even see any of that. Oh, man. I blew it. Okay, there we are. Anyways, now we got these ready. I'll give it five minutes to set up. And then we can uh, go ahead and mop the motor. All right, I just did a quick coupler check. I got the couplers on here. And they are way too low. They're too low. I don't think I could shim this enough. To get into the right height so but then i noticed a funny thing so these couplers are on here let's take this guy off okay there's a box on here let's take this guy out somebody put a coupler box on top of the existing coupler box now that i don't understand and so i'm going to take that guy off and it's not like we don't have enough of these flying better pliers. Let's just go ahead on in here and we'll take him out. We gotta find out what's going on here. He should probably glued on there. Apparently he must be super glued. But they are just way, way too low. Oh, okay. Well yeah. Yeah, they're on there way too low. And this guy he is definitely glued on there a lot. Yep. All right, I'm going to get this guy off of here. And then we're going to find out what the way it was when they built it in the factory. We didn't show the disassembly of this guy. So I want to make a special note here about the reassembly of him then. The truck is really easy, especially if you got the diagram. Um, so we don't really worry about that other than insulating the metal the metal uh, gear tower okay now the trucks are held in place by this guy right here and if you can see he's got a spring on him all right so now the trick is to drop this thing into that spot okay and then we're going to come in with the screwdriver and lightly try to figure out to get it into the threads okay if we do that right we go in lightly and when it stops we're done because that spring the screw itself turns with that spring in there okay so now we've got trucks installed we got wires up all installed so now what we got to do we have determined that the worm gear turns to the right moves to the right then we have determined that this motor in this configuration with the red dot on the bottom it will turn to the right so you got to test that and then we're going to take a, a cutoff wheel and we're going to shorten up these guys to the right thing but it just fits in there perfect the 130 so this is a 24 volt fk 130 motor it fits in there perfect and we just got to shorten up them guys and then we'll put some hose on and we will have and then we will have our hookup. And we want, okay, so we're gonna back off on these shafts pretty far. And I'm gonna fill in this little gap right here, a little piece of lead, so that it's level. But let's go ahead on and do our usual thing, where we take these worms, some mag one, and a number 17 blade with our Marvel air tool oil. As I've said before, do not buy the small can of it. Get the quart because the small one is like seven bucks and the quart's like ten. Then you can get some droppers put in there. So, what I want to do is I want to put a drop on the end of this blade like that. And I want to get just barely on this side. I'm going to get that. Okay. Okay. 
That's good to go. That one's good to go. Now on this side, we got to be really careful. We don't want grease, or we don't want the oil to uh, inhibit the uh, ed the uh, friction of our hose. So I'm just going to put it onto tiny dot on the thrust washer like that. There, perfect. Got enough left. We got just enough left. So pull this guy just a little bit, and I just want to get it onto the side, just like that. So that this is, so that this guy here remains nice and clear. Okay, now I can clear him with some acetone, which I think we'll go ahead and do. We've got to use a natural brush. So we take just a tiny bit of acetone, like that, and now we hold it down. I don't want it going up in there. We just wipe it a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. That'll make sure that our hose will be nice and secure because that's a short little shaft right there. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're ready. I'm going to get this uh, motor mounted up. First, we'll go ahead. Well, we'll put the worm. Yeah, we got to put the worms in because that's what we got that mag one for. Okay, so we're going to put the worms in here. All right, now they fit down in here. They've got a square bearing, just like that. And then there's a cap, plastic cap that goes on there. There we go. That's one. Oh, yes, yes. We blew it, didn't we? We totally blew it. We blew it. We did that part right, but we forgot to do this. We forgot to take a little bit of our Mag 1. About like that. And give it just a little bit. Of just a tiny bit of grease. Just on one side. And we don't need that much. There. Just like that. Just a tiny, tiny bit. And on this one here, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to wipe it like that. That is all that you need. That's more than enough. So then we drop them down in here. Okay, remember, you, Mag 1 is essentially a soap with lithium. So this is going to spread around exactly as needed and then go no further. And that's what we want. We don't want it spreading everywhere. We want it to do the work and not spread. That's why we don't need that much of it. And then that, that lube is going to last for decades or more. As we've already proven based on my C and W collection, which had Mag One on, and it's still good. And that was that collection was boxed up in 1991 or two or something like that, and and stored. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to put a shim. On the back side here, show you. Right here, see? Let's get clean it. Okay, you see that little spot right there? We'll, we'll put it. Take a piece of thin lead, shim it so that it doesn't droop. And we're going to put some wires on the motor before we mount them in place. And that's now, coming next. I'm going to go ahead and cut the shaft to length. So I've marked it where I want it on both sides. And I've wired it. So I'm going to say this. Wire first, cut second. Now when you put it in a vise, don't pinch it. Because you can wreck the housing. And that'll wreck it. So let's go ahead and cut this. I'm going to use a little tiny cutoff wheel here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to have to hold it. Grab that with the pliers. Yeah. 
Okay, now there he is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out. I want to shape him a little bit so he's not all rough and and got a sharp end on him. So take him. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want him to be sharp. There. Them. Thank you, bad. Okay, that's how you that's how you do it. And look look how tiny my cutoff wheel is. Yeah, I've used a lot. Now I have a big a big cutter. I got a big side cutter like this, and I have found that sometimes when I do that, I end up bending the shaft because the thing has so much force. Okay, so there is sizing. Now I'll go ahead and I'll do the other one, but that's how I size it. And, and remember, don't pinch it. Sometimes I use the rubber jaw one so I can hold it better, but um, just don't pinch the housing. Okay, so the shaft's the length. Now he's just sitting in here. And I've taken the silicone one by four millimeter hose and I've got it in place. I don't want it too stretchy, and I don't want a big old kink in it. He's just sitting in here, like just like that. Okay, now if everything looks good, and it does, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them in place. Now you put the shafts in first because it'll make sure the motor stays aligned. So I'm going to take my goop like this. I'm going to turn them around. I'm going to put some goop. Right there, and then I'm going to put, pull them up, put them back in, and let's make sure he's nice and aligned nicely. Oh yeah, that's nice. Wow, he looks nice and straight, doesn't he? Okay, now I'll let him set up. Give him about 15 minutes or so, and he will be set up, and then we're going to take a piece of this, and we're going to get it to the top. And then we're going to be ready to hook up. Okay, here he is. Gooped in place. And I I took this copper PCB. I tinned it. And I got a little aggressive on the uh, polishing of it. But uh, it's okay. So I tinned it. And now it's gooped on top. So now what we'll do is we'll connect the motor leads. And we'll connect the... Oh, this wire is going to be too short. Not a problem. We'll add on a piece in these guys. Then we'll give them some time to set up. Then I'll go ahead and I'll just cut these and I'll solder them on. And then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here's what happened. We've got these wipers on here, which are good, except for the fact that on this particular S3, and we've done this on many, many locomotives that work fine. On this one, it doesn't work. These are not springy enough. So here's what we gotta do. We gotta make it springy enough. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take some of this. Okay, so this is Tai Chi. Tai Chi train group. 015 phosphor bronze wire. And we're gonna cut a little piece and tin it in the middle and bend it a little bit like that. And then I've already tinned the spot. Now I gotta be careful. If you go too much heat, the goop will come undone. Goop can be uh, kind of like removed by applying just a little bit of heat. And for this one, we're gonna do a little acid paste now. And I go, oh no, acid paste is gonna corrode it. No, 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 it's gonna burn off. But we're only putting a tiny, tiny, tiny bit on there. And then we're taking our soldering iron here. I'm gonna hold it with this guy. Okay, I'm gonna put him right here, over the top of our other one. Okay, I'm gonna put him over the top. If I can hold him right, okay. Let's get him on there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nope, didn't get him. Okay, come on now. There, now we got them. 
Okay, and the reason we're doing this is we need more springy connection. Because when I put this on the rails, I had it, the whole thing was working, everything was great. But then suddenly I had no power with the multimeter right here. And then we can't have that. That's got to be full power there. Okay, so now we got them on here. We can bend them just a little bit. They're nice and solid. Very nice. Now these guys will stay when we put the wheels in. They will stay. They will spring back and touch the wheels at all times. I'll tell you this, if you're just going to it's better to go with the copper and then put the phosphor bronze on it because it makes it way easier. Not a little bit easier, but a whole lot easier to put to get good pickup. If you've already got that copper strip on there that you try to pick up and it doesn't work, putting that phosphor bronze wire on there after is so much easier than other stuff we've done. It just is. It It, it is... Uh, and you've seen before when we've used this stuff, it's hard to attach because it's so, it's so skinny. Now, is everybody touching? Oh yes, yes they are. All right, now as soon as the other one, the other one got had to get regooped, setting up, and we're gonna test it again. All right, the phosphor bronze wipers are in place, and I have tested all the trucks and all the leads with the with the voltmeter, and this is what we got. Hold up. Let me turn that machine off. See if we can hear this thing better. Yeah, let's, let's let's give it a listen. Oh, that's nice. That's about 20% uh, power in DC. This again is not going to be super speedy, but it is a switch engine. So we've got excellent pickup now, and there it is. Couplers are good, everything is good. All I gotta do is put the shell on it, put it in the box, and that guy's gonna go to the train show and somebody's gonna get it. Now, remember, we're missing one gear. So one of the trucks has a, has an un, the, 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 one of the wheels is just free, free rolling. But that's okay. Um, somebody's gonna get this and it's gonna be great. And it's going to be a nice Alco S3 Atlas. So the question is, why would you not do the phosphor bronze wires right away? Well, I always test the copper, the copper wipers first. If they work, then it's good. If they don't, I put on the phosphor bronze wire. But putting the phosphor bronze wire over putting this wire over the copper sheet is so much easier than trying to just put it on by itself because the other the piece of copper has the wire soldered to it in exactly the right place they were super easy to install the wiper itself was super easy to install and then when it didn't really perform putting the phosphor bronze wire over it made it uh, work just fine. That's so much easier than attempting to do a phosphor bronze wiper by itself with nothing. So if you're gonna do this, I'd strongly recommend putting on the copper sheet and doing your wiring to it and then putting the phosphor bronze, soldering it directly to the wipers. And then you get this, and this is, this is great. This thing is almost DCC ready because it's got an isolated motor that 130 is perfect for this. Couplers are good to go. Those couplers, by the way, are Bachman Easy Mate undershanks. And people are like, oh, you don't want to use those plastic couplers. It's these guys. All right, and here's the thing. So I sprayed them with, of course, Zep Graphite. I did I did zap graphite on these as I always do on these plastic couplers. And and they work great. They're 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 just right. Uh, 
it is unlikely this train is going to be pulling stuff like pug scrap and train where a plastic knuckle might be a problem. No, they're going to be excellent. And for pulling, pulling trains and switching yards and stuff, they're going to be great. So there it is. I'm calling it. That one is good to go.